Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel we're going to replace the thermistor on the heated bed of the Monoprice Maker Select Plus 3D printer. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Now, recently I started getting some thermal runaway errors on my Monoprice Maker Select Plus 3D printer, specifically related to the bed temperature. The bed would heat, but then once the print started and the bed was moving back and forth, the printer would shut down and show a thermal error. Now, this seemed to indicate a break in the thermistor cable. Now, that's not an uncommon thing when you have wires flexed back and forth all the time, which is the case on pretty much every 3D printer. At some point in a printer's life, this is likely to happen. Now, if you want a demonstration of this, straighten out a paper clip, then flex it back and forth a few times. It won't take long to break. Most times, the plastic insulation on a cable will still be intact, so it can be difficult to tell just by looking at a cable whether it's got a break inside. But the symptom I described, where the printer was able to read the bed temperature when the bed was still, but had trouble reading the bed temperature when the bed was moving, pointed to a thermistor cable with an internal break. So today we'll replace the thermistor on the heated bed of the Monoprice Maker Select Plus 3D printer. This printer is the same as a Wanhao Duplicator i3 Plus, the Cocoon Create Touch, and a few others. Basically, if your printer looks like this one with the touchscreen, this procedure should work for you. Now, there are a few things that we're going to need before we start taking things apart. First, and most obviously, we need a replacement thermistor with a cable. Now, I'm using this one, which includes a 1 meter cable and the appropriate connector already on the end of it. We'll also need some Kapton tape, and we'll need some zip ties. And we'll need some tools to get inside the printer. The hex keys, which came with the printer, will do just fine. Now, I've got a nice set of ball-end hex drivers, so I'll use these. To be fair, though, I still keep the Monoprice supplied hex keys around for times when I need a little extra torque to loosen one of the screws. Also, flush cutters are useful for snipping zip ties. So, new thermistor, capped on tape, and tools. Looks like we're set, and if you need any of these things, there are links in the description. Now, let's get into it. Since we need to remove the bed, the first thing that we'll need to do is raise the extruder all the way up so that we have plenty of room to work. Then, for safety's sake, we need to make sure that the printer is turned off and unplugged. We'll need to get inside the printer to unplug the bed cables from the main board, so let's turn the printer on its side. Next, we'll need to remove the metal panel from the underside of the printer. There are six screws holding it in place one at each corner and two down the center line of the panel. Remove the screws and then slide the panel out and set it aside. Now we need to unplug the bed's cables from the main board. Unplug the thermistor, which is this two pin connector plugged into the port labeled B temp. Then the power leads for the bed's heater. Apparently a hotbed of activity, these are connected to a green screw terminal labeled hotbed. So loosen the screws and remove the two wires. If the cables are bundled up in the rear of the printer with a zip tie, you'll need to snip that zip tie to set them free from the bundle. With the cables free, we need to put the printer back on its feet so we can remove the bed. So, with the printer in its full upright and locked position, slide the bed all the way toward the front of the printer. Snip that zip tie which keeps the cable sleeve secured to the printer's body. Then gently pull the cable up from the inside of the printer. If the cable snags on anything inside, find out what it's getting hung up on and set it free. You don't want to just yank this cable out and risk pulling anything else out along with it. With the cable out of the printer's body, remove the four bed adjustment knobs and set them aside. Then carefully remove the four bed springs. Lift the bed up and off the Y carriage, then flip it over and set it back down on the carriage. Okay, now we can work on the bed. You'll see the thermistor taped onto the bed here. Let's remove the Kapton tape holding the thermistor in place. As shipped from the factory, this is usually one wide piece of tape, but I've replaced this thermistor before, and when I was taping it down, I had narrow tape, so I overlapped a few strips of it. And that's perfectly okay to do. And now with the thermistor no longer taped down, we need to remove the fabric sleeve that protects the thermistor and the bed cables. So we'll snip the zip ties on either end of it. 
The cable sleeve has a split running down the middle of it, so we can just sort of peel it off and set it aside. Now we need to snip the zip tie, securing the thermistor wire to the bed power wires, and we can remove the old thermistor. When we removed the original thermistor, its little glass bulb had been inserted into this hole in the bed, so we'll do that with the new one. And then, using some Kapton tape, we'll secure it in place. Then we need to zip tie the new thermistor cable to the bed power leads, just like it was before. Finally, we need to get the cable sleeve back onto the cables. Hold the sleeve open and start to work it onto the cables. This can be a little tricky because the sides of the sleeve want to curl inward. But be patient with it and you'll have that done in no time. Make sure all the cables are inside the sleeve. And once that cable sleeve is protecting the cables again, a zip tie at each end will keep it in place. Now we need to get the bed back on the Y carriage. So turn the bed right side up and then let's feed the cables from the bed down through the opening in the back of the Y carriage. As you bring the bed down toward the carriage, make sure the cables aren't getting tangled or coiled up or pinched between the bed and the carriage. Then reinstall the springs at each corner of the bed and then reinstall the bed knobs. And tighten those knobs to get the bed close to the carriage. With the bed on the carriage, we need to install the cables back inside the printer. But first, let's add a zip tie to anchor the cable sleeve. So feed a zip tie down into the printer, then from the inside, send the end of it back up and out and pull it halfway through. Now insert the bed cables into the printer body. For now, we're just tucking them down in there. We'll connect them in just a moment, but before we do, we need to make sure the bed and the carriage are able to move without binding. So get these down in there and then loosely fasten the zip tie over the cable sleeve but don't tighten it yet. We need to make sure we have enough slack on the cable sleeve before we do. So check that you have enough slack in the cables to allow the bed to move fully forward, and also make sure that the cable isn't binding when the bed moves fully back. Make any necessary adjustments in the cables to prevent issues. Then when you're satisfied with that, tighten the zip tie, snip off the excess, and confirm one more time that you can move the bed across its full range of motion without cable issues. With the printer on its side again, let's get the cables plugged into the main board. Plug the bed thermistor cable into the B-Temp port. Then insert the bed's power leads into the hotbed screw terminal and tighten the screws to secure them in place. Because this replacement thermistor has one meter leads, there is plenty of extra wire. Let's coil it up and use a zip tie to keep it neat and tidy and out of trouble. Now replace the printer's bottom panel, being careful not to pinch any cables when you do. Slide the panel into place and secure it with the six screws that we removed earlier. Let's get the printer back on its feet again and then we'll plug it in and turn it on and make sure that it's reporting a reasonable bed temperature. And it looks like it is, so let's turn up the heat on the bed to 60 degrees C and see if the temperature readings increase as we expect. And it looks like we can get up to 60 degrees C without a problem and Moving the bed back and forth isn't affecting the reading, so I think this is fixed. The only thing left to do now is level the bed, also known as tramming, but in plain speak, we're just adjusting the distance between the bed and the nozzle. But everybody likes to call it leveling, and I'm not likely to change anybody's habits on that, so go ahead and get that done. So here's a quick Calicat, because it's different from a Benchy, and I like to change things up a bit sometimes. Now the Calicat took just under an hour to print, and despite a filament break about 10 minutes into the print, it seemed to come out okay. This red PLA is an old filament sample that had been sitting out for a while, and sometimes PLA can get brittle when you don't take care of it. So that came out pretty good. Now I'm kind of ashamed to admit, this printer sat idle for a couple of months until I could get around to making this video, but now that it's done, I'm happy I can print with it again. This was my first 3D printer, and I still really like it. I have a second one that needs a few upgrades, so I'll have a few more Monoprice videos coming out in the future. Okay, well that's about it for this episode. I'm glad my printer is working again, and I hope you got your printer working again too. And now my 3D printing friends, let's go print something cool. Hey, thanks for being one of the super awesome people who stick around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. 
If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. I've got some other videos here that you might want to take a look at too. And if you'd like to help support the channel, shopping online using the links in the description really helps. Maybe consider subscribing if you haven't already done that. Oh, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any cool 3D printing stuff. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.